In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can export a video from Premiere Pro for Instagram Reels. Let's dive in. When you're ready to export, the first step is that you want to select the area that you'd like to export out of Premiere Pro. So to do that, I recommend going to the end of your clip. So navigate to the very last frame of your video, click O on your keyboard to make an out point, and then navigate to the export mode by clicking on the export tab at the very top left of the screen. You'll be brought to this window, and the first thing that you can change is the file name. So you can change the file name. By default, it's set to the sequence name, but if you want to change it, you can easily just change it by clicking and renaming it inside the file name field. Then you can choose the location. You can click on here and choose where to save it. I'm going to choose my downloads folder for now and click save. Then next you have preset and format. The first thing you actually want to change is the format. Be sure that you have H.264 selected. In the preset, you can choose adaptive high bit rate for now. And we're going to dive deeper into the settings that you want to make sure you change for Instagram Reels. Next, click on the drop down under video. And this is where we're going to make a lot of our changes. For the frame size, make sure that it's 1080 by 1920. If you see that it's grayed out here and you can't change it, you can uncheck this box here and you can change the custom settings here. You can unclick the pick lock and change your sequence here to make sure that it's 1080 by 1920. You can do that for any of these settings. The frame rate, I recommend leaving it or changing it to 30. So make sure that's 30. Make sure the field order is set to progressive and that the aspect is set to square pixels. Then you have this more button. So if we click on more, a few important settings to change down here. Be sure that render at maximum depth is turned on as well as use maximum render quality. This will ensure that your video is exported at the highest render quality possible. If we scroll down under encoding settings, be sure that hardware encoding is enabled if it's an option. Depending on your own computer, you might not be able to choose hardware encoding where you will be limited to software encoding, but when available, make sure that hardware encoding is selected. Then next to profile, you'll want to uncheck this box and change it from main to high. High is for high definition video, which in most cases you'll be exporting out of Premiere Pro. Pro. The level and the export color space I usually leave as is. Same with the HDR graphics selection. The next and very important step if we scroll down here is to change the bitrate settings. You'll see that you have bitrate encoding. You have three different options. You first have CBR, VBR one pass, and VBR two pass. The difference between CBR and VBR is CBR stands for constant bitrate and VBR stands for variable bitrate. What bitrate is essentially is how many bits are contained in each second of video. This is essentially how much data or information or you can kind of think of it as quality information is stored in your video file. And what constant bitrate means is that the bitrate remains constant for the duration of the video. And what variable means is that the bitrate will vary depending how complex your video is throughout the sequence. It will dedicate more information at certain periods of your video and less at other periods of time. And what one pass and two pass means is that Premiere Pro will export it out once if VBR one pass is selected and it will export two times over if the VBR two pass is selected. So it will take twice as long to export if you click two pass because Premiere Pro is double rendering it essentially. But the benefit of selecting two pass is that you get a higher, more accurate export when you select this option. What I usually choose is VBR one pass because there isn't really a big difference between one pass and two pass. To the human eye, most people can't really tell the difference anyways. And for the target bit rate, this will essentially impact the quality. The higher the number, the higher the quality, the lower the number, the less the quality. But the trade-off is the higher you make it, the larger the file size will be. If you look at the bottom right here, you can see that the SMA file size will be a lot higher. So it will take up more space and it'll take longer to upload to Instagram, where if you click and drag it all the way to the left, you can see you get a smaller file size, but you get a very poor video quality. What I recommend is choosing somewhere in the middle. For these sequence settings, I'm gonna change it to 15. And that's what I usually do for all normal Instagram reels. This is a happy medium where you get a nice high quality export without over doing it. For audio, we can scroll down and click on the audio tab. AAC is the recommended audio format for Instagram, and you can leave these settings as is. Same with the other information here, you can leave as is. If you generated captions and want to burn them into your video, you can go to captions, toggle it on, and click on burn captions into video. In my case, I'm not exporting with captions, but if you did add your captions, you'll see this as an option. Once you're done, just be sure that in this window here, next to range, that source in and out is selected because we made that out point at the beginning of our video, if you remember. And then once all is done, you can click export at the bottom right of your screen and this will export out your video. 